Hello everyone, I'm Moitri Dash, and today I'm going to talk about our research on the design and evaluation of accessible collaborative writing techniques for people with vision impairments. In this project, I work with Anne-Marie Piper and Darren Gulpel. So I want to first start with a story. I did an interview with a blind attorney, let's call her Nova. For her professional work, Nova needs to prepare legal documents with her sighted colleagues. But she faces a lot of complexities when she works on collaborative documents using her screen readers. And this is because the mainstream collaboration tools and features that Nova needs to use does not effectively present complex collaboration information, like overlap comments and revisions when she uses her screen readers. During my interview with her, Nova shared her frustration. She said, I feel like I'm not on an equal playing field because I'm not able to actually collaborate. I want to be equal. I don't want to have to do extra work I don't want to make other people do extra work. I just want to get it fixed so that blind people have the chance to collaborate just like everyone else. Now, Nova's comment really encapsulates how our widely adopted collaborative tools produce access barriers for people with disabilities and how our normative group work practices can perpetuate and reinforce these access barriers by positioning the labor to create access as extra work or outside routine work. And this issue is not specific to one particular tool only, but in general, we can think about all the different tools and features we use for collaborative writing on a regular day, like Google Docs, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Google Slides, and so on. Within human-computer interaction, we have been studying these collaborative tools and writing practices for years. Researchers have investigated how people maintain collaboration awareness and understand who edited or commented what, where, and when and how they employ various coordinating and writing strategies to increase work efficiency. But if we think about a group, like Nova's group, where team members are not just using Google Docs or Word, but now some of them are also using screen readers, like JAWS or VoiceOver. In that case, how do these ability-diverse groups take part in this ecosystem of writing tools? In our team, we have been investigating accessibility and collaborative writing for the past few years. In our CCW 2019 paper, we presented how blind writers negotiate accessible tools and practices with their sighted colleagues. In another study, we developed a Google Docs extension to improve accessibility in synchronous collaborative writing. I'm presenting this paper at CHI 2022, so please check that out as well. The study I'm going to present now focuses on designing for accessibility in asynchronous collaborative writing. When people work on a shared document, but they do that one at a time, and they primarily exchange feedback through features like comments and suggested edits. So first, to understand accessibility in asynchronous collaborative writing, we analyzed our formative interviews with 20 visually impaired academics and professionals. From these interviews, we identified three complexities in collaboration features for screen reader users. Firstly, we found that screen readers announce the presence of comments or edits through serialized spoken notifications, like start comment, end comment, in the middle of the actual text content. And so it becomes cognitively overwhelming for users to distinguish what is the document text, what are the collaboration markups, and who actually edited or commented what. Also, it gets pretty challenging to figure out how the edits alter the meaning of text content, especially when there were multiple edits overlapping or close to one another in a sentence. On top of that, the spoken notifications create verbal clutter and disrupt people's own reading flow. So to address these issues, we designed non-speech audio representations for comments and edits to help screen reader users understand several key questions associated with collaboration awareness. The first question is, where are the comments? And to indicate comment location, we employ two auditory techniques, ear comes and tone overlay. Let's listen to an example of ear comes first. Here, the starting of a comment will be indicated by a ding kind of sound, and the ending of a comment is indicated by a dong sound. So when two ding sounds play back to back, it means there's an overlapping comment. The Statue of Liberty is recognized as a universal symbol of freedom and democracy. It was a gift of friendship from the people of France to the United States. Now let's listen to another example, this time for the tone overlay technique. The Statue of Liberty is recognized as a universal symbol of freedom and democracy. It was a gift of friendship from the people of France to the United States. Here, as we heard, the continuous tone was played in the background with the text where a comment was attached. When multiple comments overlap, the background tone sounds slightly higher pitched. 
Next, to present who commented what, we apply voice coding, where different co-authors' comments are read using distinct text-to-speech voices. Finally, to indicate who edited what, we presented edits in the context of a sentence. So instead of just providing a spoken announcements like Beth inserted or Mary deleted, this technique reads both the original and modified versions of a sentence. There are two variations of the contextual presentation. In the variation with voice coding, the text portion inserted by a co-author is read in their corresponding text-to-speech voice. And to evaluate these auditory techniques, we conducted a mixed methods controlled experiment with 48 spring data users. I'm not going into the details of our study design here, but please read our paper to learn more. So now I will share a few key findings from the experiment. Firstly, we found that tone overlay and ear cons were less disruptive than the default spoken announcements in case of understanding where comments are located. And tone overlay also made it easier to understand overlapping comments with the changes in pitch. We also found that in the voice coding technique, different voices that read comments from different authors made it easier to understand who commented what. Similarly, contextual presentation helped in understanding who edited what and how the meaning of a sentence evolved after edits. But we also found some interesting cases where these new auditory techniques caused some issues. For example, from the image here, we can see that with voice coding, it was easier to correctly identify who commented the most in a low complexity passage that had fewer quarters. But in a high complexity passage that had more co-authors, it was much more difficult to understand who commented the most with voice coding. And this is because with voice coding, high complexity passages had a higher number of distinct voices, which made it difficult to keep track of which voice belonged to whom. And our qualitative data also support this. So what does these findings mean for the design of auditory techniques for accessible collaborative writing? Our analysis highlights the design trade-offs for auditory representations with respect to cognitive effort, disruption in workflow, and time efficiency. For example, non-speech audio cues like tone overlay, ear cons, and voice coding are less disruptive than spoken announcements. However, mapping non-speech audio cues to their corresponding meanings or keeping track of which voice refers to whom can put additional cognitive load, especially when there is a higher number of co-authors in a document. So we need to keep these trade-offs in mind when designing auditory cues for collaboration. For example, in case of voice coding, one approach to reduce cognitive overload could be using synthesized voices that are representative of author's original voice, like accented voices, or creating personalized voice for frequent authors. Please read our paper to learn more about our findings around the design and evaluation of auditory techniques for accessible collaborative writing. Thank you.